because it matches the effects of what the bots would do. Aggro. So they care more about immersion than gameplay. Right? So obviously what people do, because they care more about immersion than gameplay, is they download an add-on that plays an air horn every single time they stand in something that they were too immersed in. Because nothing says immersion. Yep, it breaks like immersion. You an air horn for four hours every raid night. Yep, no thanks. It's, it's embarrassing. And it's been Echo. embarrassing. Uh, I quit in 2015. I didn't look back. I was like, no, this isn't fun anymore. Past Firelands, I was like, no, nah, this isn't fun anymore. Bye. Easy to see. That's it. This isn't some kind of like complex thing that nobody can figure out. Just make the effects easier to see. And stop making effects that are the same color as the ground. Like, I think the same thing. These things, if one of these things touches you, you You're are dead. instantly dead. Dead. Yep. And the I was like, why? Of these are the same why? color as the floor. Look at that. That's awful. Red on red on red. It is insane. And like Uber Lilith, like you know what's so funny about this? Is watching, looking at this fight right now. Ooh, I pulled the hunting bow. It actually bow. seems like it's not nice. bad compared to It's this. crappy, but it's a bow. Like, it's a green with no stats so on it. Like, That's wow funny. Is so bad that it makes I'm just going to... Well, I don't know. That'll probably sell, good. frankly. That'll sell. It's amazing. And I, I can't believe that people that play this game... Agro. It's, this has pissed me off for years. Uh, it happens to me on the NES games, too, though. There's the hops. We'll go climb the hill again. The video games should have improved in the last 30 years, right? I mean, what the fuck, man? So I don't really understand anything. No, they just ride everything forever. It's, it's so annoying. It's so, that, that's one of the big reasons why I don't like playing Rise. It's because I just think that the game has so many problems that Blizzard refuses to fix. And this is, I think, one of the biggest ones. And what I love, I love whenever you have, like, wow... You know, these are the people who, like, being good at the, their Raider I.O. score is part of their personality. And it's like, you know, how they, you know, like, this is part of their ego in, in real life. And, and they're going and talking about how, oh, well, just get good at the game. Just be good at the game. Well, you've got the, the best guild in the world doing this. It's just insane. I see your point that it's just one boss, no? No, it's not. It's a lot of boss. Like, yeah, no, they've been doing this since day one. Now. We're doing a classic. This one is nothing. So it's like really not that bad. Look at the other one. What the fuck is going on? Oh, God. What is this? This is insane. Oh, you got me why low. Can't, why, why? Yeah, you can barely even see this. Like, what the fuck? Spawned on top of me. At least it didn't aggro. Worse. Yeah, we, this is on normal mode. So it's only going to get worse on heroic and mythic. Mm. Yeah. And then only it's worse. Screw these yeah. level 18 yeah. mobs don't even give you like 1%. This one is also really bad too. So we'll go ahead and look at another boss fight. <laughs> These are just awful. There's another swirly right there. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Exactly. That's the problem. There it is. That is the problem. It's actually so sad. And this is why WoW will never get better. It's because bad players in World of Warcraft have conditioned themselves into yep. thinking that they're... Their ability to overcome bad game design makes the game good. Nope. They have an ego about the fact that they're able to overcome bad yep. game design. And because, they, th because they're able to overcome that bad game design, they now believe that they are good players and the game design is good. That's what the issue is. And what that does is it makes it to where new players are like, wow, this is bad game design. This sucks. I don't want to play this. And then they leave. 
didn't want to play that. Or we just don't care. Well, if you don't care, then why wouldn't you want to make it better? Because if you don't care about the problem and other people care about the problem, and if it didn't matter to you, wouldn't that mean that it would be a neutral at, at, at worst effect if it was improved? What's the logic there? You do care. Because if you didn't care, you wouldn't be telling people that you don't care. Right? It's a of gatekeeping. Yeah. I don't think that's applies to everyone. Of course it does. Uh, it's a of gatekeeping. Yeah. I used to play about TBC and Rats of and Graves. It was with a lot of fights. Uh, it was actually a series of RNG. Now it's visual effects. Yeah. Uh, they don't have logic. No, they don't. PoE's color scheme is the same way. Yeah, and PoE has this problem too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. PoE visual Box and barley, yeast and mold. The taste buds feel a virtual assault. No need to plead, no need to beg. The Thunder Brew lager comes in a yeah. keg. Uh, Hurry, cool. my friend, uh, move with haste. Key, right? In order for our rich but, uh, lager to taste more like beer and less like stew, hops are needed to make the brew. The issue is, uh, is not the players able to do it. Uh, the real problem, though, is Blizzard failing to get new players. Yeah. How would you design a boss fight today that's still challenging them? Okay. Just pick any. Oh, okay. What's happening? It's clear visual right there. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Actually, you know what? Let's go. Let, let's look at the new one. Okay. This came cool. out a long time ago. Let's go ahead and wait right here. Yeah, this one actually doesn't show a lot of the spell effects. Here we go, we'll go towards the end. You can clearly see the outline, right? You can clearly see the outline. It is obvious where the outline is. If there are hard lines, it's easy to tell what is going on. Oh god. I don't have it. That and I might aggro a whole bunch on the way down too. Go see how bad so Tempest on M3 was in Final Fantasy. I'm sure Final Fantasy has problems with this too. But all I'm saying is that if... And, and I think this is the problem that a lot of players have. Is that they look at it that it's a problem that the game is too easy whenever you can see what's going on. Yeah. Most people don't play video games because they're really, really hard. Yeah. And if they do, they're probably not playing MMOs. Yep. So what do you do? Like, why Why is difficulty more important than enjoyment? Because I don't think anybody the enjoys having to download a bunch of different add-ons that blow air horns at you to tell you to move out of the fence. This isn't fun. And if it was fun, you would see more people raiding in retail than classic, which isn't the case. Ego and equally. Uh, you can change the video option spell density. Do you think that Limit doesn't know what spell density is in the options are? <laughs> you think that the best guild in the world doesn't know what the spell effect options in the game are? Yes, he does. What do you... What are you thinking? It's just it's incredible. One fight never been. Yeah, they have a, have been doing it for years. They are. Yeah, laughs and DK. Thanks. Those do fias do not pay, but at least the yeah, quest does. Crazy. Nimely has four mechanics. All of them are green, and her room is green and vibrant textured. I feel like that's all you need to say about the color palette and the fight design. It's not that bad as named. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to have that add on to see my mouse cursor. Yeah, I can't see. How many of you guys lose your mouse cursor whenever you're playing WoW? And you have to have the When I left the tainted lands of Lord Aaron, I returned to a grim state of affairs here in my homeland. I can't land. use but any there of is it. hope for Westfall yet. As proven by your valor in battle, it is obvious to me that you serve our cause with honor. It is with great pride that I induct thee into the people's militia. May the light shine upon you. I try to keep Sentinel Hill stocked. I'll take the 11 silver for it. I think it's better than whatever I could disenchant for. A person like this actually thinks this is a good argument. I think WoW players deserve whatever shit Blizzard serves them up to eat. Because they make excuses for bad designs. 
And if you make excuses for I don't, that, I've never made excuses for did? it. I went looking in the last eight years. I went looking for better design in other places. And I left this. And the only reason I came back here is because of the ego check that is level 60 hardcore. When I reach it, <clears throat> I'll be happy and I'll leave. I'll go find some other content somewhere else. Go back to Rust in January when the uh, hardcore zombie server opens. Because it's better. It's more fun. It's more fun to play. Yeah, doesn't require me to go fucking do quests all the time and think about point A and point B and money and all this stress like I'm actually living the game or whatever. And, and uh, I like this sort of focus, but I also don't, you know, I like the lackadaisical, like, like sort of like wishy-washy, slow, lukewarm, like, like sandbox gameplay. You can see it right here. It's just slowly ticking, like watching paint dry. That's more my style than this point a point b world of warcraft stuff and, and and i used to hang around here because there was nothing better but but when you combine the five other games out there there is other better stuff i mean it's better if you play them all so now okay we're done here for a little while we can leave this place next we go back to fell somewhere but i guess i best just stop in stormwind really because gotta sell I already stacked up with a bunch of BOE stuff that I've got to put on the market. Like a handful of bolts and all that stuff. Put stuff in the bank again because my inventory is constantly... Where are you going? Constantly... Well, if you're looking to get there quickly, then look no further. Constantly f full all the time. They were going to go to a storm wind again. Bad design. And while players have been making excuses for this trash for years and years and years and now it's gotten so bad season of discovery i like that it's coming in eight days but it's definitely gonna throw a fucking like a fucking like a fucking just a wrench in my hardcore plans and i'm not gonna reach 60 in eight days i know that season of discovery i don't know what to play it's kind of annoying It'd be fun to play a new class like Warrior, but I also don't like really like Warrior though. Uh, could do a Hunter just because it's like so lol and just like fucking sick the pet and you know stick the auto aim. I think. I think hardcore I have to look at this like I liked season of the, I like the concept of season of discovery but yeah I mean I guess I could roll priest female dwarf priest I guess The asteroid is defeated. Could do Door Priest to 25. Might be pretty fun. Discipline. Even the top guilds are trying to counteract it. Look at this garbage. This is awful. Yeah. It tastes like chocolate, yes. I left because of stuff like this. I was like, yeah, this is not fun anymore. You half the time, so half the time, like three people are dead because of things they can't even see. And I don't want to yell at them. I, I was never that into yelling. I did not use a lot of anger to get what I wanted. I was more like, well, let's try again. Try again. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck, man. 46, 52. I only got eight silver off all those sales. It's not enough, but oh well, that's okay. I'm up a little bit. I'm going to post all this. Okay, so we're selling that. That. I mean, that would be good for the bank, but I mean, I don't have a goal for the bank, and I won't have it for a while. Sell the bag. Agility. Wow, you're saying one, like, why? It's level, s oh, yeah. These are worth a lot. I think these I should send to my alt. Because that's a twink special for level 5. 
it's actually like like really a pretty good pair of pants might actually sell let's see if we can get the two gold for it I'll, I'll go see i mean maybe let's let's let it run a couple of days and see if anybody pays that much for it because they are really good yep and five silver for that bow that's that's like unreasonably like a lot for that single item so yep. copper bolts cool pull the silver light hide Good, I have cloth to turn into bandages again, which is good. Got wool cloth, but we're not really ready for it yet. Flask of oil. Yep, and uh, so, okay. Now we fly to Thelsamar and we finish up all the rest that's there. Dry Times is going to Red Ridge actually, I think next, because I'm starting to look at like maybe dinging. So now, actually, we I believe we do fly to do a utility quest to turn in dry times just so it's over. I get a nice bulging coin purse and this disenchant, and I think I'm okay with that. It was, uh, it's XP, defeated. and XP is good, you know. This is the proper time to turn it in, so I've got to go. I forgot how much fucking travel These there was. Beasts. No pads that you can't find on foot. They'll get you there fast and maybe show you something Take me new to... at the same time. Lake sure. Look at this effect here. This is this spell is called. This was, the entire screen is red and everything going on is red. And how are you supposed to see anything going on? That's ridiculous. If you get it, you're lucky. You know, it's it's like. Yeah, like what? You can't see shit. This was ridiculous. I remember this. This was so bad. Yeah. So you might not be able to tell, but this is an AOE around him. Yeah, don't stand in it. Can you see that? Can you see that? What do you? What uh, does that mean? I used to really like this stuff, but only because of the people, how it brought the people together. I don't care for the boss fights. I don't care for the fucking loot. I don't care about the grind. I don't care about giving the loot out. I looked at it so differently from that. I was looking at like how much fun we had. It was it was definitely the most fun I'd had in a while. Fucking Ragnaros. World in Flames was a mechanic that was added in Heroic Ragnaros. Yep. And this is the one that cracked our raid, broke me. I had a mental fucking breakdown and shit. Like this, 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 this raid cracked us. It just cracked my whole reality. I was like done with it afterwards. I was like, no. It wasn't that it was hard. We were in the world running for taking it first, but it took second on that one and cracked us. The boss fight was such bullshit. It was like 28 minutes long or something stupid. It was like a half an hour each time. and This whole debacle. They made it unreasonably hard. As you see it on Heroic Ragnarok. Yeah. This is where I quit too. This was the epitome and the end End for me. It was uh, let's see if I can find the best raid and find. the worst it's raid. Only, it's only in phase one? Yeah, yeah, here we go. All right, this was so a raid gameplay. This, this was a raiding gameplay just for me like got out of vogue and they were like what do you mean you're not showing up what do you mean you're not playing anymore i'm not raiding anymore i'm playing pvp i'm playing the game still you're lucky i'm still playing the game this whole mess was so bad this is the same effect it's called world in flames yep we have actually gone down the same exact spell effect in cataclysm was easier to see then than it is now. Yep, the yep, asteroid yep. is defeated. We have regressed like, like behind majorly. We're taking yep. the same spell, World in Flames. This came out in 2011. Ito. It's so obvious. A job well done, adventurer. I know well the roads you had to journey to procure this fine array of liquor. But my regressed. patrons will be happy once again. My wife is quite a seamstress. Please accept this cloak she made this in return for your services. Sad. Come on, bulging coin purse. Come on, silver. Show me a silver. Beautiful 38 place. silver. It's going back. Wow. Yes, it is. Worth it. And bad players, gatekeeping losers who think that their only accomplishment in life is being good at this bad game. Yeah. Think that it's a good thing. Because yeah. it makes when you get around normal people, you're like, oh, man, WoW is so toxic. <laughs> 
WoW and Rust are so toxic. Life, yeah. Like, when you get around normal people again, you're like, oh, man, I, I'm so happy to be among normal people again. People that aren't angry and, like, playing a game that they hate all the time. I require your assistance once again. I have written to Lord like, Evanlock, requesting that he sends his trained guards, the Night Watch, to help with Lakeshire's defense. It is imperative this message makes it to him swiftly. You must exercise extreme caution. Evanlock is the mayor of Darkshire in the heart of Duskwood. Do not stray from the road. Yep. He was right about that. Lake Everstill is famous for its spotted sunfish. There's always demand Here's a for them. Fishing quest. And I'm running low. Bring me a batch of ten, and I'll barter well for them. That if sounds you like it's yourself, good. Then maybe you can get them off the murlocs. Oh, you can kill the murlocs for them. Oh yeah, spotted sin uh, spotted sunfish, right? Oh, just fish. I don't care about that. I can teach you fishing skills. That yeah, seems good. Um, I wonder if there's any fishing spots. No. I don't see anything show up on the mouse swipe. I don't see anything over there. I'm just looking around for anything that's like easy money. Let's get this quest out of the way because it's just, you know, right here and right now. It'll be good, good free XP. Got to pee, guys. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Hold on. Let me start the video. How pathetic. The same exact spell. The asteroid is defeated. Shit eaters. Absolute shit eaters. You mean honest attempts with aligning the edges on the floor at least? It's just, it's, it's garbage. I'll read a few comments and then I want to move on. Uh, I, I, I'm actually just really pissed. I, this makes me so mad just talking about it. Yeah, pathetic shit eaters. Yeah, I know. You can't just completely trash the game in a day. It's gonna completely trash and trash. I mean, I don't know how that helps. Okay, here, here's how to make it help. Stop making effects that people can't see. Stop making effects that have uh, unclear visual indicators. Stop adding visual clutter into the games in every single fight. Focus on clarity rather than immersion. Because whenever you don't focus on that, people add use add-ons to remove the immersion and to add the clarity. Stop making effects that have the same color as the ground. Stop making effects that have the same color as the boss. Stop making effects that overlap with each other and there are different environmental objects that obscure the effect. Is that is that too hard? It's incredible. We're, we've, we've gone backwards. We are actually going backwards, guys. Let's watch it one more time. Here we go. Oh, wow. I wonder where it's going to be. I wonder where the fire will be. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Well, now I wonder if the fire is going to be in the front or the middle or, or the back. Oh, it looks like it's in the back. Move in. Oh, it's in the back again. All right, let's move in even more. Fucking Ragnaros. We have gone backwards in time. This is dead. My eyes actually hurt, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's almost like Bliss is a priority of shit that comes out under any class now, rather than making boss mechanics visible. Yeah.
Because people don't like to have their time wasted by something that doesn't feel fair. Yeah. It's that simple. <laughs> Offense at the rates in retail are great. Well, there are a lot of things that are good about the rates in retail. Wow, it's just that the visuals aren't one of them. Uh, they're over-designed. They're designed for people to play the game professionally. And guess what happens whenever you do that? I don't know why people don't get it, no matter how much you explain it. Let me explain why people don't get it. It's because WoW players only play WoW. So they are not able to add, they don't have any context, and they don't have a frame of reference to judge the quality of the game off of. So they just play one game, and their entire identity is trapped and you know caught up in this one game. So if you criticize this one game that they're good at, you'll be like, well, why can't you just be good at it like I am? Because they're unable to see outside of their own narrow perspective. That's the reason. Retail is just dog modern shit eaters and slow pro players. Yeah, you can like a game and point out shit, uh, dog shit design. Yep, absolutely. Why not just have clear and solid telegraph? Well, because if you do that, then the fight will be easier. And it's more important for a game to be hard than for it to be fair. It's just so sad. It really oh, did I miss one? Oops. I guess I did. It's kind of boring to me. That might be funny. I do something. On creating value. You guys don't know what value is yet. Buy the course. Maybe you'll learn what value is. You think I want money? I'm doing this for you. I don't need your money. He's got all of these tactics. This is the frontier that I think most people have not gotten to yet is this is all made possible because of, of really corruption of government. For years, I used to tell people, write the FTC. I met with people in the FTC. I used to exchange letters. Don't even bother anymore. These are, we're having a discussion that I swear I could not have had 10 years ago. It just wouldn't, it, nobody would ask these questions. It was just considered out of bounds. Robert, you're the expert in this industry, and in this video, I want to get beyond the basics. A lot of videos on multi-level marketing, they cover sort of, they do like a recap of the generic industry. But now I want to go deeper, because as I've looked into multi-level marketing, I feel like the conversation needs to progress beyond the sort of uh, important, but also sort of over-discussed fact that, you know, People are losing their life savings. We know this. We know that there are, you know, a lot of these big companies have major, major problems. But I want to move beyond that and talk about how do we get further into regulation reform? And I know that touches on some very serious issues of, like, government corruption, regulatory capture, etc. Now, I think 
it's impossible to get into this without mentioning that you have a book coming out called Time to Mind, for those of you who don't know. First, maybe I should say thank you for coming on the show, and then let's get into this. You're very welcome. Ponzi-nomics, yeah, first of all, a made-up term combining the term Ponzi, which is a form of fraud, not a computer to pay Paul, with economics. The idea here is to combine the two because in what we've got today is a a belief system. The belief system is a pseudo-economics for trade in, the, in terms of sales, marketing, business language, multi-level marketing, which we'll get into itself, is a pseudo-economic term. You did in the book, you talked about the history of multi-level marketing, which not a lot of people know. I, I sort of thought, oh, Amway, I sort of heard of this thing called Neutralite, but I was really sort of surprised that Carl Renberg, who most people think is the founder of MLM, um, who created Neutralite, which is the precursor to Amway, he was actually a massive failure in his business right. career. Like, it, it was shocking. Like, this is not a guy, it, we lionize this person, or Amway lionized him. They put a statue up, they, they wrote a biography for him. But this guy was kind of, as as you point out, an abject failure. Can you speak a little to that? So I began the book speaking about Carl Lundberg for that very purpose. I wanted to show the origins. Where, where did all this come from? And as you see, the, the, the origins are quite banal and mythologized. In, in reality, they are quite banal. And I'm just um, a small uh, sort of fortune seeker uh, guy uh, not uncommon in that era, uh, particularly, um, and uh, uh, and and ended up with a small vitamin company uh, in, in the in the era when vitamin pills were just exploding into the market as a sort of new technology, and uh, he ends up uh, largely failing throughout. A tiny little company uh, based in Southern California never really moved out of that area, and in the end uh, is approached by two individuals who were also failures oh, yeah. in, their own, in their own careers. I, you know, I don't say that disrespectfully, but they, they had not really achieved much in life. And, uh, but between the two of them, they uh, sitting in, in a sort of temporary work in a munitions factory during the war, and concocting a plan, and the plan was a, a, um, a variation. It, it included elements of sell, selling, direct selling, door-to-door -door yeah, selling. Right. But it also easy. incorporated elements of Ponzi, which had occurred only 20 years before, and the chain letter, which had occurred only 10 years before, which was a mania in this country in the mid-30s during the Depression, uh, where you would put money in an envelope, send it to a certain number of people, and they would get it and send it to a certain number of other people, a, a classic chain. Yeah. At the end of the chain, the money flows up to you. And it was a, a, a folly, a mania, but it occurred in that era. So these things were all sort of combined into this distortion of direct selling in which the salesperson ultimately became the customer unwittingly. And he redeemed himself, and I'm using he here because at that time most salespeople were men. That's all changed now. Um, they they would redeem their uh, that's all changed by now. Recruiting other people and getting some of the money from the other people. Did it now? So there were elements of, of abuse of salespeople in the direct selling business, and the, one of these inventors was a manager who was for years had recruited salespeople never fully informing them of what they were up against and what their costs yeah. and time and so on. Yeah. So that was that was not an uncommon practice. Uh, and as I say, the incorporation of the Ponzi and the chain letter into this to create what they called the plan. So they purposely kept it vague and unidentified, the plan. And when they implemented this plan at the end of 1945, that little company went from about $2,000 a month in total revenue, which was to cover all their costs, into becoming rapidly a multi-million dollar business. In the course of several years. Just, just like, a couple of years, yes. Yeah. 
And that and nothing about the company itself changed. So clearly, no. it's the bit bu- something's going on. Obviously, with the business model, and of course, the business model was multi-level marketing. It was the invention of multi-level marketing, and it sold the endless chain, the unlimited opportunity. You recruit just two. They recruit four, eight, 16, and pretty soon you have an army of people underneath you. Um, each one is making exactly the same promise to the ones below, no matter how far it extends. It pretends that saturation doesn't exist. It pretends that markets have no limits on them, that salespeople cannot uh, ha- have over competition and so on, all the fundamentals that exist. It denies. So it was engaged in a, a large uh, process of re-education, diversion, of getting people to think about the possibilities rather than the simple realities of it. So from the, from the beginning, it was always a sale of, a, of a, a kind of snake oil, but not the vitamins. I mean, the vitamins really were more or less the bait and the trap. And uh, whether the vitamins worked or not, it didn't matter. They weren't FDA approved. Uh, they didn't have to be. Uh, and so that was really just the, the mechanism for it. Since then, we've seen a myriad of products. The products really truly don't matter. The, they are not what multi-level marketing was about. The products are almost a pretense for the whole pyramid scheme. I mean, it seems to me, it seems like almost an in-game currency. Like, I don't know if you know, in video games, there's all these microtransactions that happen where you put in money and then they give you like this in-game currency, which is pretty much meaningless because it's just kind of like traded within the game itself. And then someone late, the company really cashes out at the top and they're the ones who make all the money. That's the way I think of multi-level marketing now. It's kind of like a side pyramid scheme to just sort of get around the technicality. So whether it's vitamins or essential oils, it doesn't fundamentally matter. That's your perspective as well. That's your core argument, isn't it? Precisely. The, pro- the products are the lures. They are the, uh, the cheese on the mouse trap. And if you were to tell the, the poor mouse uh, of only about the cheese and, uh, and, and talk to him about the quality of the cheese, is it old cheese, is it good cheese, uh, what country did the cheese come from, and so on, uh, how does it taste? without telling them that the cheese is set on a carefully designed lethal machine, a little device that will snap its neck, you wouldn't have helped the the mouse at all. And that's what happens a lot, is a lot of journalists talk about the cheese, and uh, they get very involved in this. The essential oil really uh, cure cancer? And can can they actually stop aging with this cream? And so on, and uh, this is the exact discussion that multi-level marketing promoters want to occur. (laughs) They don't want to. Hey, the whole business is fraudulent. Yeah, instead of the whole business is not a business at all. It doesn't qualify as a business. Now, Uh, I would. I actually want to talk to you about this because I can tell. So you've been at this a long time, and part of your book is sort of geared talking about. I, I would characterize it as maybe your frustration with talking to journalists who always seem to grasp sort of a half truth, or if they grasp the whole truth, they don't print the whole truth, and they instead print uh, sort of like a watered down version, which includes a both sidesism of like, well, Robert Fitzpatrick says it's all fraudulent, but the DSA says it's not, which is like a glorified, it's a lobbying group owned by MLM. Um, But don't you think that's changed a little bit with the advent, whether it's because of the internet or people are waking up to this scheme and enough people have talked about it where now it's not that uncommon for people just popularly or in the media to be like, MLM? Oh yeah, don't you mean a pyramid scheme? That's penetrating more, isn't it? Absolutely, very much so. And having, again, we, as we began here, 22 years I've been watching this, I can <laughs> certainly recall when it was not like this. It was worse. If you said what we're saying right now. They would have been what? Um, well, would have been like you, what? You were considered a- almost um, possibly a conspiracy theorist, someone who has only a, a grudge or he has certain, some kind of malevolent intention. 
you, you simply have a negative view of, of entrepreneurship. Maybe you're anti-capitalist, you're anti-business. Somehow you hate people who succeed and so on. So the, it was very difficult to say this uh, and the media almost never uh, approached it. They uh, absorbed what was in the popular culture at that time. And that popular culture uh, got shaped uh, starting about 1980. This is another part of the history that people don't realize. Prior to 1980, and let's say going back to the 1960s, when the first, uh, when these multi-level marketing companies really began to make an, uh, an imprint in the country and hundreds of thousands of people started joining them and there were more of them. It began to be more than just Neutralite or Amway. There were more of them. At that point, regulators began receiving complaints, huge numbers of complaints and realized something was wrong here. And so at that point, laws were passed in many states, anti-pyramid scheme laws. We had no law prior to that. In addition, in Congress, 1973, a bill was proposed by quite a famous senator, a Senator Walter Mondale, that was to make pyramid selling a criminal offense, that is a felony. In some of the states, as in, it is in California right now, the law, the anti-endless chain law, um, is the, it treats it as a felony. It's a felony offense. Wow. So then that, that law was passed in 1968. It was signed by Ronald Reagan, who was governor at that time. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that there was a clarity among within government and among regulators in the 60s and into the 70s that inherently any plan, any proposition the based on dinner. Exchange, <laughs> that is, uh, your, your investment can be, uh, you can gain a return on your investment only by getting more investors. They will right, have to do the you same. recruit five and they recruit five, and yeah. it always presupposes that everyone's gonna make their money back because there's always more people, but obviously that's a fallacy. Right, so this is an inherent, inherently deceptive. It's not just deceptive, it results in harm because the vast majority of people have to be at the end of that chain and they're going to lose. So it can cause the loss on a, mat, a large scale. They had also known that such schemes like this can create mass manias. So large numbers of people can sort of come under the spell of this and it can cause large societal harm, which we have seen in other countries such as Albania, where an entire government was brought down by allowing one of the, several of these schemes to run rampant. Right. So what happened? Well, what happened was politics. Uh, and primarily, as I try to describe in my book, uh, the in Ponzi-nomics book, the player, the major player here was the Amway Corporation and the two founders of Amway who had spent 10 years in the first multi-level market, they became extremely politically active. One was the chairman of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the other was uh, a treasurer for the National Republican Party. It was chief fundraiser. That's so unbelievable. That's Richard DeVos you're talking about. Yeah, and Jay This Van is Ann. good. Yeah. Now, and it's worth noting that you real information at home. Who's our Secretary of Education right now? You yeah. might recognize that last name. Yes, he's DeVos. De DeVos. Uh, it goes all the way to the tip and stop. And that's what I mean by we have to go. We have to go deeper. deeper. Conversation because yeah. if you only talk about Herbalife in isolation, you miss why the Federal Trade Commission would only fine them with a slap on the wrist instead of actually banning them altogether. When it should be illegal to be a pyramid scheme, that's what we say it is. But instead, this they're bound not. to have done pyramid scheme things, and then you slap them on the wrist and say, don't do it again, when that's their whole business model. That's what I mean is that's what I want to see go in the pop culture. So give us a rundown, a brief history. You said it starts with Amway. Where did it go from there? So they realized they're about to get regulated out of the country. They have the huge case going up, up against them. How did they get out of that? Yes, so certainly uh, circumstances sort of conspire to do, to do this too because they had some power. They had significant power already in Michigan. 
and they were uh, already a large company, multi-million dollar company, and there were several of them. But the law, the laws had been passed in various states against endless chain. The regulatory community recognized these things for what they were. These were glorified chain letters. They understood these things to be very harmful and just inherently deceptive. So they, the government acted to shut them down, to literally kill multi-level marketing. I won't say in its infancy, but in, 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 let's say in its teen years, because it had now begun to multiply into multiple companies, many more people are involved. And so they prosecuted them. The original prosecution would have been from the Department of Justice as a criminal offense, but that law didn't pass. It passed in the Senate, but failed in the House. Then it moved over to the Federal Trade Commission. And bear in mind, the Federal Trade Commission already now is a huge concession because the FTC does not bring any criminal charges. It cannot. It only deals in civil offense. So it treats it only as a uh, sort of a bad practice. And they even call it that, an unfair, deceptive business practice. So again, we had no law against pyramid schemes. So the FTC interpreted a pyramid scheme, a vague term, to be under the general category unfair and deceptive trade practice, and they prosecuted the three largest ones at that time, uh, which was Coscott, Holiday Magic, and Amway. The first two were run by marginal characters. Uh, Holiday Magic was run by a member of the John Birch Society. He had run against Ronald Reagan in California. He was quite a radical uh, individual, uh, and uh, his company was shut down. The other one uh, was uh, Glenn Turner, who was a kind of clownish character. Both are dead now. Uh, Turner died fairly recently. He had a clown palette, which he used as a kind of brand for himself, like a poor boy from Cal from South Carolina. Sure, yeah, Ken yeah right. Connecticut. And he, he wore these gaudy clothes. He drove in big fancy Cadillacs, and he put, built a so-called castle in Orlando, Florida. And, so, and he was, both of them uh, also sold mind training programs uh, along with it. Those two were shut down, but when it got to Amway, Amway was quite different. Uh, again, the two founders were heavily embedded in the most powerful political and financial organizations in the country. Here over yours. They portrayed themselves as very pious Christians. Uh, actually, they were from a, a fairly extreme form of Dutch Calvinism. And a little sect up in Michigan, and um, and they tried to connect their scheme to capitalism itself, to entrepreneurship, to self-employment. So it, it kind of rang well. It, it it resonated with Republican politics, which were against labor unions and so on. So uh, when the government's prosecuting Amway, which they launched the case in. 1974, 74, 75, uh, an unusual event occurred. What the president of the United Pleasure States doing business with you, ladies. In disgrace. Matey. Because of Watergate, as we know. Mm -hmm. And his vice president takes over. Now, this is exactly during the time the Federal Trade Commission is prosecuting Amway and seeking to shut it down, as it had just shut down its two largest competitors. But the, the new president is Jerry Ford. Jerry Ford is a congressman from Lansing, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Amway happens to be his among his largest. Fifty silver for that moss agate. And so uh, they hold a private meeting. It's all documented in the news media at the time. They hold a private meeting with him in the White House uh -huh. while they're being prosecuted by the government. They hold yes. a, a private meeting with the president of the United States. Yes, and so uh, by this time. Uh, by 1979, the other member of the two, DeVos, at the Republican side, has become the main financial fundraiser for the new coming, incoming president, Ronald Reagan. So by 79, when the FTC renders its decision, effectively they drop the case against Amway. And the... Uh, See you around. So Amway was legalized. What can I do? And in so doing, multi-level marketing became, quote, legalized. And then from the next 12 years, which was eight years of the Reagan administration, four more years of his vice president, George H.W. Bush, there were no prosecutions 
And during that time, they expanded into other countries and they solidified the narrative. Hey there. On your the skill exceeds mine, though I've heard that old man Hemming in Booty Bay has copies of the race in you. That is sure to help you increase your skill. A pyramid scheme. It's not, pyramid it's not scheme. synonymous. Now, let, so this is one of the things Great you friend. talk about in your book, where you say, basically, Amway, and this decision created sort of a, this idea of almost a unicorn in the land which is an MLM that's based on uh, actually not on recruitment, but actually has this element of retail sales that makes it different and you know sort of legal. And I think that's what people are imagining when they say, oh no, this is like a legit MLM as opposed to a pyramid scheme. They say, yeah, this is actually based on sales that's rather, right. than, rather than recruitment. But your point is, is show me the unicorn. Where does it exist? Has anyone right. seen one? What does this <laughs> right. look like? Like the yes. whole presumption of the Federal Trade Commission, their whole definition is sort of that, oh, well, there are these bad MLMs that are pyramid schemes, but then there's these good MLMs that are actually selling something to the broader public. Yeah. But as anyone who's ever uh, encountered an MLM knows, all their products you've never heard of before. You will not find them on the shelves of Walmart or HEB. Does anybody care in the Federal Trade Commission? Does anybody know that this is happening? Have you seen anybody actually push back against this? Because it seems so obvious when you do the most modest amount of research. Yeah, well, um, before I go to that, I want to emphasize the idea that um, a, a scheme that had been treated as a felony offense only a few years before, suddenly became the exemplary model of capitalism in America. That by 1982, Ronald Reagan spoke at an Amway conference as the president of the United States and called it capitalism in America. So really? this is an extraordinary, powerful oh, no. oh, endorsement no, that imposed itself on public thinking. And when you have that kind of authority backing something, you can actually literally doubt your own thinking, Excellent not believe your own eyes. I never yes. thought I'd see these tools again. Maybe During I'm wrong. The I mean, they called it direct selling. They said bullets, swords, and armor. We sent word to Stormwind for a new shipment of materials, but a band of Red Ridge Knolls hijacked the caravan and ran off into the hills behind Lakeshore. Now we're coming up short on supplies to get this bridge rebuilt. If you can bring me five iron pikes and five iron rivets, adventurer, I'll make sure you're rewarded. Now let's get to work. I'm at a gold 90. Time to go shopping. I should technically expand my bank and put a slaughters <clears throat> in the bank. There's medium armor kits. That's cool. Yeah, but uh, oh, I don't know. Let's do the shopping first and then apply them. Yeah, we gotta see if there's anything else that has a lot, a lot, a lot Where of badgy. Where would you like to fly to? Stormwind. Have a good one. All right. Said it's it's the greatest example of American entrepreneurship. And they claim that people make money at this, even though I didn't. So this is where the imprint came on multi-level marketing in the popular mind. Even if you've never been to an MLM meeting, this is where <coughs> you got this idea. Because and, and there was no really anyone else to speak of. In the mid-80s, a couple of books were written. Uh, by people who had been in it. Uh, one was called Fake It Till You Make It by Phil Kearns, and the other was called um, Amway, the, the Cult of Free Enterprise. The Cult of Free e Enterprise. Susan Butterfield. And they're remarkable books for de describing what goes on inside uh, these programs and how they work and so on. But they were lone voices. Um, so there was no lobby 
to tell the, to push the truth, but there's an enormous lobby to push the lie. And if you're a politician, and this is where I think it is so hard for people to grasp this, uh, because it's so crass in a way. It's 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 hard to understand this uh, to accept it. Let's say we can understand and accept it. Politics is power. There's no power among the, all the hundreds of thousands of victims of multi-level marketing. Right. They're not organized. They have no spokesman. That's right. They have no political voice. Whereas the MLM industry has a, a lobby on K Street, a professional association. They hire the best lawyers. Yep. They have professional. Legitimate they criminals. Nolan, uh, what's it? Hill and Knowlton, the company that promoted the cigarette industry. So, I mean, they have this expertise in distraction. And, and so politics came in, you know, to play. Do the people inside the FTC, to your question, do they know? I know they do know. I know they know because I've talked to them. But they keep their head down. There's no career advancement for speaking up against this. Um, that at, at the FTC agency level, which remember is a small... Let's look at level 15 to 20 stuff uncommon and maybe that's what i'll spend the gold on uncommon weapons mainly uncommon right anything cheap yeah there's like because i could buy well no there's just wands though but yeah i could buy like that i mean yeah they're not gonna pay out any better though these are this isn't gonna help me this is good to know so uh sword wise is my next thing First, we fix the swords, uh, one-hand swords. That'll be a pleasure. Uh, usable search level 17. Yeah, we're looking for cheaper swords. The cutlass is fast, but the damage is far superior on one of these. So I guess that's actually what I'm technically supposed to spend this money on this tiger blade yeah one agility two strength one agility two strength yeah this is technically what i spend the money on i guess yeah it's unfortunate but eh, you know weapon upgrades are not the worst thing you know i like the cut the the blackwater cutlass and i'm gonna stick it away for now but i mean yeah like i'm just about now about to start putting points oh hey i'm full wait i'm full Am I full? Yeah, I'm full. All right, well, go home. Self drive active. All right. New sword. <clears throat> nice, score list. Uh, nice. All right, so, okay, we got a new sword. No, no, do not hearth. Uh, I got a new sword. I should have bought two tiger blades, but this one was cheap, so I just bought it for that. I don't mind the stamina, frankly. It's okay. Yep. And now we got a damage upgrade. Uh, what else is crappy? There's something else about the. It's the bracers. The bracers. I'm ready to spend like 50 silver on bracers now. Definitely. Did I buy ambush? No. Maybe I better do that first. I mean, I uh, can't remember if Ambush takes daggers, but I think it does. I could just do my training, but it's expensive as hell. It's like 60 silver. Maybe we'll just do that. I'll do the training. It's fine. I like Ambush. It's a good ability. Whatever. That Cutlass is nice. It's fast, and it's got nice Agi on it, but... Eh. I like the dual swords. I think it makes her look fucking sweet. Hello. Hello. Agency. It really is is a tiny little agency. Um, they are funded. They are operate under the presidency, funded by Congress. So they're bounded. Uh, they're captured. You look like the they type I could watch my coin. And for years, I used Something to tell people, write the FTC. 
I've met with people in the FTC. I used to exchange letters with them. I don't even bother anymore. And they aren't even the appropriate agency anyway. If, if this uh, it's a criminal if they, matter, you're saying it, it should be considered as fraud, pure and simple, oh. and just let the law follow. Oh, oh, uh, you are in my stream. Um, so I guess I don't have to type. Um, sub, there are several reasons why I have sub only mode on, but mainly it is because I've been at this for 18 months. And I think most of the people that would be in this channel are in this channel. Uh, and, uh, if they, I, I'm not, interaction is not a main goal on my channel. So, uh, you know, if you can follow and watch for free, but, uh, c communication was not, was not a main goal on this channel. It is a long form, like 50 year personal history of, of, of the games that I play and what I spend my life doing. Damn it. Daggers, man. Fucking daggers. Never mind. I don't want to train either of these. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So the interaction on the stream, I did it for 18 months or well, like 16 months, something like that. And it was disruptive to the stream. And it's disruptive to my job. And so, like, you know, if you if you feel the need to speak with the community that's in my channel, you can pay to do so. But otherwise, interaction was not a goal on my channel. I'm not doing this for clout or hits or, um, uh, you know, recognition or fame or any of that stuff. It is actually a personal history. And on top of it right now, uh, we are uh five hours into a 12 hour recording session oh uh thank you so much dark moon i appreciate it but uh uh oh and uh thank you so much for for the interest i appreciate it but no uh, i am i'm not solo self-found but i'm self-found in the respect that i want to be able to say that i did this all by myself so it is, very, it is very, very nice of you to offer, but I don't ever accept gifts from people, either in real life or, you know, and I don't mean to insult you or, or hurt your pride or anything like that. I think that's fucking awesome. Thank you. But uh, I am not a person who generally does gifts. I'm very neurotic and weird. So, you know, I don't I, I, like I, I don't like gifts from the public. It's just me. So. Uh, you know, just being me, you know, just trying to be real. So, uh, thank you. But nope, uh, the, the, the best, uh, you know, uh, my, my website is skycat.live. The best support I can expect, you know, like is, 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 is a follower sub. You can also go to skycat.live, which is, which is here. I'll take it back to the tab here. And, uh, and this is my website, skycat.live. You can come to the cat's face and donate, or you can, you can, uh, follow, or I'm sorry, you can sub on Twitch if you want. Uh, right now I am, I'm currently live on YouTube and I, and another reason that I hope is one that you might accept is, is that, um, I am five hours into a video recording every day. I put 12 hours of, of YouTube videos on YouTube, which is reflected here. Uh, and that's, I'm just trying to answer the questions. Like it's not some snub to the public or me trying to get your money or scam you out of your money. I just actually, I am recording right now and I have some 900 videos on YouTube and I don't wish the chat, uh, to interrupt in a major way. And I don't, I don't want, uh, interaction with the public skewing the, uh, the videos. As you can see, it just goes on and on and on, you know. Yeah, I like got a lot of videos on YouTube with some views and stuff. So I try not to do interaction with the with the public every single day because it is disruptive to my job. And so, you know, and, and, and uh, so thank you for the support. I really appreciate that. And thank you for the offer of the gold. But I'm not sure I have a streamer. I'm kind of in it for the long grind on a personal history vibe. You know, I've done some stuff like run guilds and ran clans and stuff on this channel. But I'm not I'm not like, you know, I'm not looking for much interaction with the public. And, and, and so... Uh, this is reflected here also as well in the, uh, in the moderation, 
Yeah, uh, there at the bottom is. Yeah, I said it best on on the on the uh, the chat rules, right? Chatter chat interaction is not a goal on my channel. I will not speak much, even if you do subscribe, as excuse the videos. And that's the best way to look at it. Excuse the videos. <laughs> and it, it's not some some ego trip or something. Like I I realize it comes across kind of ego trip, but no, no. I've I've been at this for like two years, and I'm publishing. And so in the publishing process, and the, the uh, I used to actually keep. Uh, I, I still keep uh, chatty on my channel uh, and it, it will tell me when people are talking so you're free to talk to me and I will answer but uh, uh, one of the aspects of my job that was very uncomfortable is when I pulled a lot of kids the interaction got infantile the attacks on my family and myself became very real and so, you know, another thing in the chat channel is like, I'm not looking for kids, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I didn't want kids in the channel and stuff. So that's why. So, uh, yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. so, yeah, uh, cause, uh, yeah, I'm just, it's not my vibe. So I'm not pushing for like, I, I like subs cause I'm, I'm, I'm here all day, every day, like 12 hours a day for, you know, seven days a week. But, uh, you know, babysitting was not one of the reasons I got into this job. And it comes up quite a lot. Like, I spent the first, like, 15 months of my of my career doing this, like, babysitting kids. And I don't want to do it anymore. And that's the real reason why the chat's on sub. I figure I, I'll do it, but they've got to pay me to do it. You know, and it's it's rude, but it's the truth. And I hope you, I hope you can accept that. So that's where I'm at with this. Thank you for the wonderful support, and I'm here, you know, I'm um, here, we can talk, it's whatever, and uh, I love you guys, I hope you like some World of Warcraft, I'm gonna get back to it, <coughs> excuse me. Went from there, at a fraud nope, meeting, nope. a calculated deception that involving money that results in harm and is understood to cause harm by the people first. i think the the easiest way to look my make myself look bad but get to the truth and the core of it is if if they want to talk to me they've got to, they've got to pay me otherwise i would be preferred to le to be left alone doing my personal history you know what i'm saying it's autistic it's selfish it's it's very anti-people and anti-social it is what it is but i mean th this is my job and i'm trying to do what i can do to balance it with like what i can stand to do and what i can't stand to do i'm not good with people anymore i have no people in my life no friends barely speak to my family don't do don't do clans or guilds i'm a solo completely like lone wolf like like for instance like on on this game my corporation is called lone wolf shadow dynasty and i'm the leader my link shell on this game is called the free state of skycat and the guild when i can afford it in this game will be free state of skycat as well because i'm not an i'm not an affiliate or a member of any group that would have me as a member and so i'm, I'm i guess you could call that anti-social and crappy and loser talk if you want but i mean it, it is what it is it's 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 where my life is at i spent my entire life as a social butterfly i don't want to do it anymore i'm i'm i'm, I'm kicking the people out so <laughs> that's that's just, that's the long explanation of it it's selfish and stupid but it's real and that's really all we're looking at here it's a kind of racket and that's that's really what um if people could get their but the, you know the first thing is to break the, the chest that it's business uh the chest is yeah the next thing i think this chest i'm wearing is way too old so yeah but there's nothing here there's there's like nothing here son of a bitch man why do you gotta fuck monkey so bad ah oh, i need that chest and it's so expensive prospectors is an option but boy you charging a pretty penny Feral for four gold, nature's wrath, eagle, spirit, feral for another gold. I could reach this next and it would be a very good upgrade. Lock high vest, nope. Inscribed leather is a superior chest plate despite having less agi than I want. It is still an upgrade. Oh no, hey here. This is this is great. There we go. This is what I want. There we go. Great. Cool. Take it. Sold. 
Uh, oh, yeah, the bracer. Yeah, yeah, the bracers are really fucking bad. So, yeah. Uh, no. 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 I mean, uh, yeah, I'll take stamina if it was affordable. I mean, should I take it just based off the fact that it has, like... No, no, those stats are so bad for me. But, like, god damn it, man. Bracer is miserable this young. Anything at all, huh? No. I got a Bracers on the last character and I fucked up. There, it's the Prospectors, but you're charging a gold for that? That's ridiculous. I'm not paying that much. God damn it. I'm just gonna save the rest and, and like technically I should dr train I mean when would I ever I guess ambush does make sense if I'm like in a party so I guess I'll go dump half my silver on ambush but I don't think I'm ever gonna buy that gouge yes yes I mean and and what you have to do if you're gonna understand that maybe the best way to do it is to strip away the fanfare sort of all the well what about this company what about that one and you identify first it seems to me well what is a pyramid scheme what's it what makes a pyramid scheme a pyramid scheme and um you know correct me if i'm wrong but i basically you have this endless chain which we talked about uh you've got a pay-to-play system so you have to buy in you have to buy in to be a part of it to make money and then you have a recruiting mandate where you're like okay i have to go get somebody to come bring them back into my scheme and then you have this money transfer up, right? Those are like the four elements that's, of the pyramid. That's the four elements, yes. What is different for those of you at home in an MLM? It's you look every like the type single one of those components. Something I oh, there it is. I bought it anyways. Else. They try to harp on this. We're, we're retail selling. But if you've been in an MLM, and I, it's almost something that... Um, you know, you can't encourage people to do oh, now I have ambush. farm to themselves and their, you know, their family. But Broke the bank, but oh well, there's always more. At least I've been to some of the meetings. <coughs> it's immediately apparent that nobody's interested in selling the product. So you, you don't even have to, like, think about this. If you just go to one of their little Hilton seminars, it's immediately <laughs> apparent that nobody cares about, no one's excited about their, you know, uh, their cleaning solution. Everyone's excited about going out and recruiting. And so... When you strip away, you know, the well, Amway's been around for 27 years. If you strip away the charismatic preachers, the prosperity gospel that underlies all of this, at the fundamental level, it's a pyramid scheme with a few little bells and whistles on it to try to hide it. That's right. That's um, so I don't, so I think that's what has to be done is you have to strip away the smoke and the mirrors and realize that this is something that's been sort of it's really they've gotten away with sort of murder through the use of politics and power and money i mean that's but the whole that's the whole yes. thing politics power money and propaganda and uh that's another element to this is um very sophisticated propaganda which includes discrediting people like myself making sure there are no professors at universities who would make a, an in-depth study of this. I've talked with people at universities, and they would tell me, well, we can't get into that subject because Welcome to the well, we have no room. funding. We offer and if we were to develop a proposal for studying it, you already most have likely the only people who would fund it no would be the MLM companies, out of here. which would Not in the whole destroy our of the whole history. Yeah. So, so they just no stay, stay away from out of here. that. Yeah, Not they stay the out of the whole of subject. The whole. So, yes, I, I think it really requires people to sort of set aside the prevailing narrative, to shift their language uh, away from uh, business and thinking of it as sales and business, and just start from the premise, well, what is it? What actually is it? And, and you already did that. You, if you just break that model down and what are the four elements of it, and those are the four elements. And as you said, if you set foot in one of these meetings, you discover immediately it isn't about selling products. Also, the very idea oh, the Moss Agate. Yeah. that you would have a skincare or, or a lipstick or That's 50 silver. Clothing. It's not bad. Kitchenware, 
that you could personally make a living from your home in the 21st century by yourself selling such commodity goods that are available in stores everywhere, online everywhere, you know, instantly it can be delivered to your house, no middleman. Why on God's earth would you need uh, uh, 10 layers of managers and in between and middlemen and salespeople? Why would you need a, a personal salesperson? I feel the same. It's impossible. You might as well think you could make a living selling apples on the street, you know? And, and it's just a, a ridiculous or, or notion. Even more so, become wildly successful. Make un yes. unlimited wealth by selling your apples on the street. Like that's, yes. the, yeah. that's the real argument. Um, you know, one thing that I've been fascinated by, and it touches, it, it's an overlap between sort of what you and I sort of do. My kind of audience knows me more for these charlatans promising home-based businesses. Is this 50 idea silver. of double think, which you get into in your book, which is... Uh, she looks dope now. She's got a black hood and green pants and stuff. Hells they're yeah. Promising these miraculous cures to the, to, with their like whatever uh, vitamins. But she could get better bracers, but no. Nope. Whatever Alzheimer's, whatever it is. And then the the uh, was it F FDA? At FDA that time. comes up and they say, hey, you can't do that. Knock knock knock. We're gonna take you down. And they go, okay, we'll stop doing that. And they reworded the language to say it without saying it. And this is what I find all the time, where. I'll see a sales letter that'll say, you know, this kind of mysterious drug that doctors don't want you to know about will cure you of Alzheimer's or whatever. This isn't even in the limb. And then at the bottom, it'll say, well, the FDA hasn't been, you know, they'll, tr they'll d say they're not making any claims while making all the claims. How did, how has this come about in multi-level marketing? What has, have they done to sort of, <laughs> no ad that you can't find on foot. They'll All get you there them. fast and maybe show you something new yeah, at the same time. Uh, they have become Where some is it masters you would like of to go language. Let's For start just a with few the coin, like multi-level marketing itself, um, which was coined in the 1980s. So that era that I spoke about, when the federal government and the state governments were passing laws banning pyramid selling and endless chains, that's what they called them pyramid selling and endless chains. They had experience with Ponzi. They knew about chain letters. They knew about referral selling, you know, where- Five minutes. I sell it to Damn you, it. but don't worry, you can get it free because after you give me two names and they buy, you know, I'll give you your money back. Cluster well, shut how down. How am I gonna get two other people? Well, they can do okay. the same, okay. right? So nobody ever pays for it. It's always free. So th this is the culture that multi-level marketing had come from. And uh, so the government understood that. This looks like flim flam, fraud. This is a scam, straight out. And they couldn't even imagine, actually, the early regulators, that this thing would ever endure because uh, they didn't understand that these people could silence victims with shame. They never imagined that these things would amass enough political power that they could cut off the regulators. But then, in the, after they got this one ruling in 1979, and then they had an administration who basically shut down the FTC for the next 12 years on that subject, pyramids. Docking permission requested. They coined a new term, multi-level marketing. Sounds kind of like franchising, direct to customer, B2B, something, you know, sounds professional. You're right, multi-level you know? marketing is very innocuous sounding. It's not professional. It's genius, yeah. Very, it's, it, is sort of Orwellian in that it is sense. absolutely um, Orwellian. It was created exactly as an Orwellian term to divert you from the reality that you're seeing and experiencing, but you're calling it multi level marketing. And as you say that word, you're telling yourself it's a business. What you experienced was a scam, but you called the scam a business, so you can't actually. Uh, interpret that correctly in your brain. The word level kind of sounds like, oh yeah, like a national sales manager, you up, regional, motion. yeah, you, you move up. With, nobody gets promoted in multi-level marketing. <laughs> no, promoted? No. Promoted to what, another layer in the pyramid? I mean, you're all, if you're not at the top, there's no promotion. 
<laughs> I guess you could be higher on the pyramid. Yeah, you could be higher on the pyramid ladder. Yeah, the money can funnel through you to the top, but you're still not. If you're not at the top, there's no promotion. <laughs> Those levels are merely markers. For recruiting. That's all they are. Yeah, like and there are, yeah, that's just like recruiting for for nothing. It's it's, it's like, uh, are you a, a manager or an assistant manager in this dream? <clears throat> Are you an assistant manager? Are you an assistant manager to the manager in your dreams? <laughs> the Lord levels assigned. Are you an assistant Lord manager Lord. in your dream? To do. You're not a manager. <laughs> and it's like when I get into an MLM, I'm immediately thinking, how can I dominate the guy at the top directly? Skip all these assholes, not pay a cent. Take over that person's life, like talent, Mr. Ripley or whatever, and dominate the top of the pyramid for a week. Take that money and go start another pyramid where I'm the legit top of it without having taken anything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying how, like, how I would think of it if I was on the outside looking to get into something, frankly, as stupid as this. I just don't think I, I I'm just not dumb enough to do something like this, but <laughs> in my dream i'm definitely not promoted in the pyramid i'm the top of the pyramid and sure you don't manage you're not responsible there's no product flowing from one level yeah to yeah the next like level. yeah yeah like so so who cares you can be the central european like magnate of my butthole or whatever emperor god king of of uh you know uh his excellency uh all ruler regency of europe right it doesn't matter. You still are not the top of the pyramid. At which point, at which point, you, it doesn't matter. It all comes from the company. These are just yeah, it does, the, the, they're just markers. They don't mean anything. Like if and if you're not dumb enough to know that, you don't deserve the money or the top of the pyramid. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm so bad about this. And fundamentally, it's almost a marker of how many body bags you're accumulating underneath you. Exactly. No, no, not body bags. Layers of the pyramid beneath you. Because the bigger the pyramid, the more money funneled to the top. So you just keep making the pyramid bigger. It's a form of sandcastle building out of people's dreams and money. <laughs> It's so dis it's so disgusting that you really must have like a hatred for your fellow man to ever even engage in it. Vast majority something that's like, that's what I really think I this mean, is about. I think these people who do this, they have a deep down, like full blown, just level hatred of the herd and want to take all of their all the all of the herds uh hay. They want to just take all that grass and hay from the herd. They don't they don't like the herds, so they just harm them and steal from them. This is what is necessary to be in this MLM shit unless you're, I mean, sorry, this is what's necessary to be at the top of the pyramid. If you're not at the top of the pyramid, it's just slavery with extra steps. See how you're running the map, but somewhere in the realm of 97 to 99% of these people every year, every year. Yeah, are, are, are it's me. so stupid. Year. Remember that fucking so stupid. Or 1%, whatever Mercenaries. That's in a one-year time frame. Well, so that one or two let's go get they it. They stay the same. They, they're there the next year. What else is here? It's, it's are like churning at a fifty to eighty percent. There's like a mine. There's like a mine here. Uh, gotta watch height. Is it that one? It is. Okay, I want to go north. I guess. Okay. We're, oh, let's so go to a, a cave. I would normally go to a cave, but I'm like four levels higher than this, so. To me, it's just free XP. You add up all the people who've been in it, let's say, five years, and say how many of them made a profit. Now you're way, way less than In the point zero one. Yeah. Yes. The final word I want to put in about multi-level marketing is the most important one. Marketing. Yeah. MLMs do not market. We just said you can't know the brands. They don't advertise. Market means... I have something, a good or a service, and I deliver it or provide the service to someone else. There is a market for my product, for my business. The people in multi-level marketing are the market. There is no external market being served by multi-level marketing, quote, salespeople. They buy, they have to buy. Much better. 100. That's the, majority that's the best white hit I've seen so far. Beautiful. Right off the first mob I pulled. Awesome. I like the sword upgrades. They're good. Business of I love sword rogue. It's so fun. Generated by the purchases of the people inside the chain. 
who are classified legally as contractors, buying at so-called wholesale price. So they are their own internal market. Uh -huh. They make their own market. There is no market out there being served. So when you say multi-level marketing, you've kind of implied there's a business structure, kind of like a corporation. You've implied there are levels that kind of show levels of responsibility, and you've sort of implied that this is a system of delivering goods and services to some external market. None of that's true. Yeah, None it's, of that's it's true. people can just imagine, because it's, it's, you kind of have to get to the point where you can look at MLMs for the weird, strange thing that they are, um, and stop seeing them as, as a business altogether. If you imagine that Google, for example, giant corporation, the only reason the way it made its money, no one used it on pl on the planet Earth except the people who work for Google, <laughs> except the software yeah. engineers. They're the only ones who paid the salaries. They, it's like it's such a strange thing. Of, wait, so are they paying themselves? And you come to find out that they're not – the people at the bottom aren't making any money at all. In fact, they're losing money, and they just end up paying the people at the top. You're like, well, this is insane, which gets us sort of to the uh, – the what you call the big lie of MLM. Can you explain what the big lie of MLM is? You'll get paid. So the, the big, the big lie, lie is that, that you'll make money. Business. No, no, you don't make yeah. money unless you're at the top. And that's the – that's that's the big lie is, oh, you'll make money if you engage in this somehow. No, no, you're just my advertising slave. Slavery with extra steps unless you're at the top of the pyramid. Listen to him say it too. Is, uh, two biggest lies are that it is direct selling, which is what we've been speaking about. And in which fact, is like when you sell no, something just, door to door. Yep. No. Yeah, and people used to do this. Yeah. And there is a little bit of it still left in the world. And insurance salesmen still come to your house and sell the product. But you, as you know, you can now buy insurance online. All those Geico ads and you know uh, show you that you don't need the sales guy coming in the door anymore. Uh, home improvement contractors come to your house and talk with you. Funerals are still <laughs> sort of sold this way, actually. Some some funeral directors go. But by and large, it's vanished. It doesn't, really exist. It doesn't need to exist today. Direct selling. And you don't need it anymore. There was a time when communications were primitive. People lived in isolated areas. Uh, they were home. A salesman could show up. And, and provide a service and a product. It doesn't exist. So that's oh, the first one. Oh, crates, I see. Disguised okay. as a business when it is not a business. And the second one is that it actually provides an income opportunity. So you've got a, a disguised business claiming to offer a broad-based business opportunity. In fact, it is advertised as the greatest in income opportunity in the world. And that millions of people are making good money at it. <laughs> and this is, I say this is a big lie because a big lie, by definition, is a lie so audacious and, and, and that the average person could Terrible have, lie. Someone would have the impudence, the arrogance, the audacity to say it unless it were true. And so, so to take a model that we just described uh, that actually has no external market in which everybody's losing. 90 some percent every yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and that claims that you could in the 21st century sell commodity goods from your home and make a lot of money at these are absurdities that are perpetrated <laughs> and they are said so aggressively with such authority <laughs> at, right over their shoulder saying it's all true it's all true it's, true. it's, it's all it's, it's fine it's fine and they have celebrities it's real you know, and they have sports stars and so on to where the mind, as in all big lies, mm. can be overwhelmed and you can create a mass delusion that defies logic where people can say, even when they lose. Uh, one more crock list. This is the second level of That's deception. Fine. And I think anybody that explores, we, we're talking about it sort of, we said the first step, kind of the first step is is breaking free of the idea so that it's annoying. a business, that it's direct selling business, mm. that it moves products and so on, that it's based on product. But after you, that's that's sort of the lie, that's the delusion that all of us are left with, culturally imposed, 
it's being challenged today, I, for sure. But it has decades. It has been imposed decades mm -hmm. into the public mind. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you get in? So you sign up. Your cousin, your friend, somebody invites you to it. You get into the meeting. You hear all this. You sign up. Within a month or two months, you realize, first, nobody's retailing these products, and actually, you can't. And you see that plainly. You don't have to be a sales you know, business person to, to realize this. It, nobody needs these things, or it, they're high-priced, and Thank besides, you. they're in stores, and, and besides, they're telling me, on the one hand, to sell it, and then on the other hand, they're saying, recruit. But if I recruit my next-door neighbor, he becomes my competitor. So it doesn't make sense. So, so you conclude, oh, I'll get it. It's, it's not about selling. It's not really direct. It's recruiting. That's where the business is. So now you're in there. You realize that much. And then, of course, you're having to buy. You discover you have to meet a quota every month for you to stay qualified so that after I recruit you and two others and you recruit four others, I reap the rewards, but for me to reap those rewards, I have to maintain my own quota. So and I'm buying. You're not going to sell it, but you're just storing it like in it. your garage. You become the customer. I'm the customer, so you know uh, all of them. They tell you straight out, you a hundred dollars a month. The vitamins. What's wrong with that? Buy that. I mean, it's good for you. Well, you don't know if it is, but you, they say, and then it keeps you qualified, and now you can start getting in on the rewards. So now you're paying, you're losing, you realize it's not selling, and now you're losing, so it's not income. Why don't you quit, right? Why, don't, why wouldn't I quit and rush out and tell my friends, whatever you do, don't get into this thing. It's, I mean, it's not what it appears. It's the opposite of what it appears. Why don't they? I'll tell and that's, you why. I'll yeah. tell you why, because this okay. is something that I have a, such a gripe with, and it makes me so angry because I see it all the time. All of these things have this brainwashing, I would say, that occurs within the scheme, and it's a big part of it. I used to think it was incidental, but I think it's a core component of what makes these things successful, is they tell you that you're quitting because you are somehow less than or you're a failure – and if only you had kept on, you could have manifested this. This is the whole positivity movement that is completely taken over all of these things. And, and like I said, I see it in sort of a parallel scam. It's, it's not as mature of an industry as multi-level marketing or as organized. But it's very similar where they tell these people, oh, yeah, well, these are – for." This, these results that we promised you at the beginning, these are for people who work hard. And maybe, I mean, if you followed the plan, the plan works. Maybe you're at fault. Maybe you're the problem. And there's this incredible amount of shame that goes on with these, uh, with, with I know multi-level marketing, but all these kinds of schemes. Am, am I getting somewhere near the ballpark of, of yeah, the problem? Absolutely. As you said, uh, selling uh, positive thinking as a – absolute tool for achieving success that is telling you well, you can be anything you want the key to it is simply sh changing your mindset um, that in itself is can be a business to go out and teach and preach that you know yeah. and there are a lot of people doing that and telling you it's not about your training it's not about the, the number of people there's yeah. competency or competition or or the market or the state of the economy where you live it's not about any of that None of that matters. It's only about you. It's all up here. You can change it. If you can imagine it, you can make it happen. Okay. That's right. That's a business in itself. But in multi-level marketing, and, and many people call that a scam, by the way, but it's a kind of um, delusional story. It's hard to nail it down. There's always somebody that would say, yeah, that hap that's exactly the way it happened for me. I went through a course and became transformed, and then my life turned around. Mm -hmm. But in multi-level marketing, it takes that very powerful story that you just described involving shaming, anybody can do it. If you can imagine it, you can make it happen. Prosperity thinking. And then they matched it up with an, absolute, a, an actual proposition, an actual business. So it's one thing to sell it as a general idea, 
But they took it and said, now, there's your belief, and here's the business. But the business is a calculated trap. It is impossible for me to keep the second year to be profitable because they need a hundred others for them to be profitable. In other words, it's a money transfer, not an exchange of value. So if I introduced you into a room with no doors and said, just, you know, you can get out. No, you can't because you're locked in. Okay, that's a trap. And that's what they've done. They've taken a belief system. Mm. And I mean, if you think how devious this is and how harmful this is. If I can convince you that everything's possible, and if, if you should fail, it will only be your fault. You're, you're losing at the most, the greatest income opportunity in the world. Yeah, how Anybody dumb must I be if I lost the greatest yes. opportunity in the world? Wow. And you blew it. And you blew it, right? And it is only your fault because you believe anybody couldn't do this. And you imagined your success and you had envisioned it. Well, they succeeded in two things. They shamed you when you leave, so you're not going to blow the whistle. But notice that in that process, you never did get out your calculator and go, five times five times five. You stopped thinking, you stopped believing your own eyes, which were, they said it was direct selling when I walked in the door, but I saw within 10 minutes it really wasn't. And they said that everybody could make money, but you know, actually I haven't met anybody personally that is making money. We're all losing. But you actually suspend that judgment. <laughs> Somehow there will be money someday. Own observations. Yeah, it's like sunk cost fallacy is part of it. Like you get so far into it, you're like, someday, somehow, this motherfucker is gonna pay. I'll kill to make it pay, and you just believe that it somehow is gonna produce money from the sky. That you wouldn't have to go rob a bank to get that kind of fast money or any of that. Eh. <laughs> Own experience, and you substitute it with their imposed words, their authority. Agro. So they literally take your power away from you. They kind of enslave you. Is MLM, a, it, what you're describing is almost like some uh, religious... Yeah, cult. Religious it's like a cult. Aspect. It's uh, the, the, sort of the, key the guy at the top of the pyramid is Jesus. The rest of you are peasants. Simple enough. Legalities for a minute. Just you know, we understand what a pyramid scheme is: unsustainable lobby Peter to take all money transfer. And you take multi-level marketing apart, and it matches up precisely with the pyramid scheme. Now let's do the same with a cult. What are the elements? Do they have been identified. There are elements in their lives studying the cults, and there are these specific characteristics of it. One of them is the utopian vision. Another is proprietary language that takes you out of your fact-based experiential language and puts you in Sod, my food is gone. Multi-level marketing. Don't remember sales, doing anything with it. But sales people, okay. calling a money transfer a bonus plan and so on. So they use specialized language. They use uh, a brainwashing technique of persuasion, which we yep. already identified here, Narcissists. separating you from objective reality. Yes, yeah, so it's not. It's not what you. What, you know, it's it's not what you fail to do. It's what I fail to do. It's narcissism. It's this thing about it. Everything steers you back to the, to the, to the, to the, you know, all roads lead back to the Jesus farm at the top of the pyramid. There's no you in that situation. If you can imagine it, you can make it real. Nothing is actually real unless you say so. They separate you from your community. And so that if someone says, you know, I really think you ought to take another look at this. I've investigated it. It looks like a scam. Are you actually making money? Are you keeping a record of how much you're spending? They tell you, get away from that person. That's a negative thinker. A toxic person, cut them off. And then, what they said, that's, that's my wife telling me that. You know, how much is your wife worth? Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's what's holding you back. 
Maybe that's who's holding you back. And then, of course, they separate you from your own identity because they get you to imagine your dreams. They already <laughs> know now that you've <laughs> They get you to imagine your dreams. You are a <laughs> dissatisfied person. You're disappointed in your life. You thought you had greater potential. You have longings for things that you've not achieved. They know that. So they will tell you, you know, the reason you haven't experienced Finally. these, these uh, longings, you haven't fulfilled yourself, it's you. It's the way you've been thinking. You say, well, I was brought up. Yeah, well, you need to separate yourself from all that and, and learn from the masters how to think, how to be. And now we have things for you to read and, and study and watch. So then, and you need to be at these meetings. So they also dominate your time. So they have controlled your environment, separated you from your own identity, separated you from your community, given you a proprietary language to speak, and then also Agro. put you into this utopian thinking realm. And there are other elements to it. They mystify it. In other words, the level marketing, it has the secret to success. Well, I have a job, I'm a school teacher. Sure, sure, you know, sure, sure. that's for losers. He come to this meeting. These people understand success. Mm -hmm. That's it. They mystify it. So mystification and then the separation of, your, from, of you from your identity, from your community, the imposition of a language. Mm -hmm. These are all the elements of brainwashing of a cult. Now, the problem people have when you say that is they say, well, it can't be a cult. A cult is a business. That can't be a business. I mean, cults deal in the occult. They deal in abstract and metaphysical terms. But a business is so mundane. I mean, profit, loss, cost, income. I mean, it, it's, it's a, a ledger, you know, an accounting. It's the opposite of a cult. It, if anything will, will douse you with reality, it's a business. Multi-level marketing is not a business. First of all, the government allowed it to deal in the occult when it allowed it to perpetrate the delusion of an endless chain that's an infinite, has infinite. You will not see Apple or Google speak about infinite. There are always limits. There are always limits of resources. Markets have limits. Multi-level marketing is the only so-called industry allowed to do that. So they have already been allowed to traffic in the occult, and which is, or metaphysical, mystical terms, delusional, unreal. Also, also, I've got to, I've got to say, I think it's important to no notice this, this, uh, this believe it, you will do it. While I, I, I think in an extremely limited scope, I, everyone can understand. You know, you've got to be confident and stuff like that. But they push it far beyond that. It's very much wrapped up in Napoleon Hill and this Christian science. You know, you, you, you're only going to have your beliefs and all this kind of stuff. You were, you really quickly are heading towards religious language, religious territory, aren't you? Absolutely. You're, you're engaged. You're, you, and that's why when you go to most companies, they put a lid on that. They, they may engage in a bit of it of trying to get you to bolster your confidence you know, have, have a vision, set goals for yourself, have a plan, and, and, and take responsibility for your own life, and so on. But, but they will not push it throughout your whole life. They don't try to impose it and make it a way of life for you. In multi-level marketing, not only do they push it to the total, there are no limits, they will start talking to you about your marriage, your family life, your child rearing, your religious practices, what you do with your time, your, what do you watch on television, they will, it becomes a way of life. But then most important, and I think this is where it really crosses this line, they then attach it to a specific business proposition of the, of the multi-level marketing business. Here's $500 you, you pay. You do, now, now you're saying, I can, you can do all these things I told you to do, you can make success but they just gave you a plan that it is mathematically, physically impossible for any but just a tiny percent to succeed at it. So you, yeah. absolutely it is a cult, absolutely it is engaged in brainwashing. And by the way, 
They've been doing this for over 40 years. The first MLMs, both, all three, Amway, Tuscott, Holiday Magic, had very sophisticated uh, re-education programs, mind training programs. So it's always been hooked up with that. It's a necessary component because, as I say, if they didn't do that, and within a day or two, most people would probably figure it out. This is not working. This is not what they said it was. Right. And not only am I quitting, I'm warning others. So a flim flam uh, or a scam has always two elements. One is to get your money. The second is to make sure you don't go to the police. And so not all, not delivering these the barrels to the excavation that. site is hard work, but there are so many depending on us to get the blast powder there. We must do what we can against the dark lord. Agreed. Hmm. It'll take more than a dark iron ambush to stop the deliveries, but sorry, on. I would never have suspected him to be one of their sympathizers. We've been working with him for almost a year now. Maybe I missed the sign. Well, I'll consider that later. We've been hauling the barrels of powder back and forth in trips before this business. Now we have to split up the work. Moran's taking the barrels and I'm watching over the other ones. I don't feel safe letting Moran haul the rest of the shipment by himself. When he's ready to go, maybe you could escort him on his next trip. Off with him. Now on an industrial scale, they already took care of the police. Hello, police in the pocket. You'll be escorting what they're worried the about is public awareness. That's good to hear. And that's why I say, After I think, Sion as and his we said, cronies, who knows there is a shift occurring. Not their because there's regulations. Anyway, no, let me just make some not, final yeah. check. But Talk because to me again when you're ready to go. Ready to go, adventurer? First, we need to get this powder to Iron Band. It'll be a lot for me to carry. And these parts can get dangerous. And who knows what else the Dark Irons might have in store for me. I'll feel a lot better with you coming along. Delivering these barrels to the excavation site is hard work, but there are so many depending on us to get the blast powder there. We must do what we can against the Dark Iron. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong one. As public awareness is growing, people are breaking the silence. They're not afraid anymore. You look on the internet now. This podcast you're doing right here is evidence of it. These are we were having a discussion. I swear I could not have had ten years ago. It just wouldn't. It, nobody would ask these questions. It was just considered out of bounds. You could say some MLMs are pyramid schemes. Yeah. Well, tell me which ones and how do I know the difference? Well, nobody could do that. But if you said Agro. all of them are no. essentially the same, you could say out, out of bounds. You could never call them a cult. You could say they look alike, maybe some of them, but you couldn't really get bore into that subject and say this looks an awful lot like brainwashing, undue influence overwhelming critical thinking, abusing people's minds, really. You couldn't say such things. And finally, this is the frontier that I think most people have not gotten to yet, is this is all made possible because of, of really corruption of government. It, it and that's the, that's the topic where I think most of us are, if not just hopeless, we're almost perplexed because it's incredibly complicated of, okay, the government's corrupt. What does that mean? Who's corrupt? There has to be people. This is, you're sort of blaming a systemic structure, but that in of itself isn't super productive. How do you get to meaningful reform? How do you get to meaningful change as an individual who's sort of talking about it? Um, do you have any answers to that? Surely you've thought of quite a lot about that. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, as I said, I, 
I've been to Washington. I've met with people at the FTC. I've met with members of Congress. And you know, recently, one hedge fund tried to bring down one large company, Herbalife, and they expended quite a bit of money trying to find out who in the government. They believed the FTC would be persuaded by the facts, and so they spent $50 million gathering those facts, publicizing those facts. It didn't work. You're, of course, talking about Bill Ackman's very public fight with Herbalife, and yeah, he had a hard lesson in learning that facts don't necessarily matter when you're talking about an industry that has essentially cornered the market on their own regulation. Um, it, it, it feels like we're in a time where the only meaningful change you can get out of the government, even with a perfect exposure of a business, is an individual MLM being labeled. Oh, we found out that that was a – oh, silly us. That was a pyramid scheme all along. You know, how could we have let that occur? We're shutting that down. And there's no – looking at the entire you know sea of other MLMs there's no thought that hey maybe all of these business models are based on the exact same business model back from Neutralite which was already ruled against way back in the day maybe this is just the same thing over and over again let's do something about that that's my personal frustration with this is the um, sort of microscopic view that's been taken is we're just going to prosecute individuals Yes, and that, I, I think I diverted us a little bit. You had brought up this, this idea of unicorn, and, and I used that in the book because what the FTC has done, a, as the complaints rose mm. and they couldn't get away with just saying it's legitimate, it's direct selling, there was just too much evidence piling up. So they created a, a theoretical model here. Under the theory, multi-level marketing uh, is workable, legitimate business. And, and so it has all the same elements you identified, Yet somehow, the people in it earn sustainable profit from retailing. Yeah. And the company earns its revenue not from the I. distributor, so-called, but from an external market that's buying those products. Why they're buying them, nobody knows. How you could manage to retail the product under these conditions, they don't answer that. But they say, but if it did, it would be legitimate. Because the law uh, isn't really – hasn't spoken directly about endless change. We don't have an anti-endless change federal law. So we'll set that aside, and we'll just say if more of the money came from outside the chain than inside the chain and so on, if people were being harmed because they were actually able to sell the product profitably, um, yeah, it would be legitimate. And you say, okay, in theory – in theory, pigs could fly. Oh, thank the light, the powder is here. But it is troubling news that you bring as well. To think that the Dark Irons have sympathizers able to procure this sort of material for their dastardly plans. That's a matter for someone else to consider. Some other time. I must put this powder to good use. That actually might be worth something. Vendor or auction says six silver, but yeah, I think I'd probably just take. Uh, I mean, they're nice pants, but I'll probably just take the skill up, frankly. I'm gonna deflect on the bracer. I would prefer that, yeah. Yeah, replace it and I'll take one deep more and more defense. It's actually not that bad. Okay. So there was some combat somewhere close by, but I didn't see it. That's weird. I thought I just here. Yeah. So in there. In there? I don't know. 
up in there? No, not up in there, but in there. So these are no joke, but they're my level, so see how it feels. They look lanky, but I think we could grind the outside and do all right. Yeah, I could do like the outside and just do singles. That's good. Sit here for a little while, kill the boars. They're just the level where where they still pay. Skin them. There's a vendor here. All that fishing. I mean, I should technically go sell right now. I could just take a free ride out and go sell again. But I'm gonna let's get full first. <laughs> Keep filling up. I need bags. Is what I should spend this money on. Agro. Yeah. In theory, I won't ever die if I just think positively. In, in theory, okay. But give me some evidence now. Show me one. Just give me one example. God, one, she moves slow when she's stealth. You know, company, the Paragon, the one that's representative of this model. They've never given one. They've never given one. They've never. I, they've never tracked retail sales with me. No, they, they deliberately do not go. Into no. There it is. And all the people in their retail are just having to buy the product themselves. There's an external market out there. There's people making money every day just selling the product from their homes like like in days of old. And happy customers and happy salespeople. And you say, well, what about all that other, the bonus, the recruiting? Well, yeah, that's there, but it isn't. Uh, it, it doesn't characterize the company. Uh, so, okay, which one would that be? Show me one, because I can't see how you could offer people unlimited income by recruiting, and they somehow don't avail themselves of it. Instead, they go out and sell, in effect, apples on the street to their neighbors and friends, and they actually are able to keep doing that, and the friends keep buying these apples from them rather than a grocery store. Show me one. It kind of doesn't make sense. They never do. So the theory is just a ploy. It's an agency ploy to avoid a terrible reality. Well, uh, yeah, and the terrible reality can be seen, or it you, you sort of sense the scale of it. When you see Raven. Push. All involved this multi-level marketing these are not some low level uh <laughs> you know state senator it's not a federal it's not a, a you know a house of representatives person it's not even a lobbyist these are presidents that are representing these private companies and they essentially be almost lobbying on their and behalf because of course if clinton thinks it's great or bush thinks it's great well this is just a bipartisan issue we all think it's great that is, to me, what's the most uh, disillusioning about it when you see Disillusioning, it. yes, yeah. that's it. Because um, what you see is that uh, the politicians have used, um, and, and I've, I've tried to write about this, uh, again, put it in historical times, 1970s, is actually now, economists show us, is the high point of the middle class. It's been going down down, 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 ever since. From the 70s on, small towns collapsed, the deindustrialization, the factories closed, the downsizing, the outsourcing, the employment flatlined, you know, the income paid wage le levels flatlined, costs kept going up, healthcare became unaffordable, college became unaffordable, inflation became unaffordable for large numbers of people. And literally, age expectancy, life expectancy has is flattened. Or is yeah, all the time I think about like, will I sell this place if if I ever own it? Because it's a lot of work to upkeep it. No, I'm gonna keep this place because the idea of losing it is terrifying to me. I feel like going out there in the streets with just the money is actually terrifying. I don't know if I'll ever own a home again beyond this, and I'm not letting go of it. Going down in the U.S. So something terrible has sort of been happening in the U.S. Our government, and I'm not speaking about polit politicians of one party or another. This looks like death to me. Huge, huge trends occurring. 
they didn't actually do anything about any of this. They let pay that all looks like in, debt to me. I'm not doing that. Thousand percent interest. They let private schools come in and charge, you know, students coming out with a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand of debt. That's what happened. People die because they can't get health care. They didn't deal with those. Multi level marketing helped them by saying American Dream is not dead. It's alive and well. It's better than ever. It's a new thing. It's called multi level marketing. And it's all up to you. Don't come and complain. It's all about it's a wonderful story that serves as a wonderful Death. cover for negligent or corrupting politicians. And they allowed that. It was very convenient. On the other side, the public who were victimized by this had no voice. They didn't come forward in throngs. They didn't drive up there in their tractors. They didn't carry no. signs. They were silenced, shamed into silence. They were seething. Some of them committed suicide. I mean, I can't tell you in my work how many divorces I, I've seen occur from people in these things. Young people dropping out of college. Uh, families just ripped to pieces on this. Their lives have been really torn up by this delusional story that was perpetrated and spread like a virus here, but it served politically. It was very convenient for both parties who were essentially doing nothing about those broad trends that I described that have driven down the quality of life in America and other countries too. To such an extent that in some countries when MLM enters, the people are led to believe this is the epitome of capitalism. This is the free market. This is what it looks like. And I mean, how ridiculous is that? That pyramid scheme comes in representing um, market economies. And it's, it's just it's just such a travesty. And I think we will ultimately look back at this as one of the great follies and tragedies of our time. I think we'll look back at it like a Ponzi scheme. I mean, how did anyone ever push this or allow this to be pushed? Or who was falling for So, yeah, coming in here is death. I'm just going to get link and response and hyperlink and all this shit. I'm just going to leave. This place is death. Yeah. Came too close right there. Just gonna leave. Got a bad feeling about it. I'll come back here. A lot of link and stuff. Some of the quests. But I, I got three, three, well, two completes to, to turn in. Let's go deal with that. So the the first one's way over here, but I'm actually not far from there. So good. Um, and then yep, and then we'll turn that one in. And